In 336 BC, Philip II was killed at the wedding celebration of his daughter. He was stabbed to death by his own bodyguard Pausanias, who held a dagger under his cloak. And after the death of the Macedonian king, all power passed to his son. Thus the twenty-year-old Alexander III was given possession of a powerful state with an experienced army, which at the time had no equal. Such a fortunate coincidence for young Alexander, already ready to prove himself, raises doubts that the talented son was not involved in a conspiracy against his father, however. At the beginning of his reign, the newly minted Tsar had to face serious problems. It turned out that the news of Philip's death gave some of the ancient Greek polities and some of the Thracian tribes hope that they could get rid of Macedonian hegemony. The inner circle advised Alexander to act through diplomacy, but the young king had his own plan. In the same year, 336 BC, Alexander marched briskly through Thessaly, reached Thermopylae, where representatives of the Greek polities had gathered. Then he advanced through Athens to Corinth. The result of the rapid campaign was the recognition of him as the hegemon in the struggle against the common enemy, the Persians, that is. The Greek polities recognized the new ruler of the Macedonians as the universal military leader that his father had previously recognized, and only the proud Spartans responded that their fathers had willed them to always lead, but not to be let dot while in Corinth. Alexander received word of the uprising of the tribals in Thrace, and in the spring of 335 BC, he moved his army north in the battle at Mount Jam. The Macedonian phalanx defeated the rebels, of whom at least 1,500 were killed. The victors seized the cartage belongings of the Thracians and the women of the escort. The latter the Tsar has ordered to send to coastal cities for subsequent sale and slavery. Next, the Macedonian army defeated a number of other Danubian tribes, crossed the river, and defeated the Goths. Then, after learning about the rebellions in Illyria, went west to the territory of modern Albania. There, Alexander made the wise decision to capture the fortified settlement of Pelium, which stood on the way across the most important crossing from Illyria to Macedonia. The fact is that while Alexander was beating the barbarians, local conspirators turned their weapons against the Macedonian garrison in Thebes. They were supported by Athens by providing the necessary weapons, and in the event of an unsuccessful siege of Pelium, we would have to bypass the mountain range, which would have taken up a lot of precious time. But Alexander was up to the task. The crossing was in his hands, and he went south immediately. Most likely a series of successive rebellions angered the young king, and all the anger he had accumulated in him was unleashed on the Thebans. It is true that before the arrival of the punitive forces, the leaders of the revolt in Thebes briefly reveled in the rumors of Alexander's death at the siege of Pelium, believing even more strongly in the success of the undertaking. Two weeks later, overcoming more than 30 kilometers a day, the Macedonian army approached the walls of Thebes, and the army of none of the Greek polities dared to come to the rescue of their neighbors. Even the Spartans did not dare to engage Alexander. The city was doomed, but its inhabitants resisted to the last. At one point the Thebanese even had a chance to turn the tide of the battle. However, 
the reserves of the attackers intervened and utterly destroyed the defenders. In the fierce fighting, in the assault, and in the streets of the city, at least 500 Macedonian soldiers were killed. The fate of Thebes was in the hands of the 21-year-old King of Macedonia, who ordered all the male population, with few exceptions, to be executed, the women and children to be sold into slavery, and all the buildings to be burned. The total destruction of one of the strongest polities in Hellas had an immediate effect. No one even thought to challenge the leadership of Macedonia, and thus in a short time, King Alexander strengthened that necessary for a large-scale march to the east, which before him for many years was prepared by Philip II.